Welcome to Game Dev Guidance. In this tutorial, I will walk you through how to control your animations through script. We will be importing new animations, creating parameters within the animator controller, and accessing them through code. This will be done inside of a blend tree to create a basic locomotion for the player to be able to walk around the scene. If you are unfamiliar with setting up a character for animation in Unity, then I suggest you watch my tutorial on getting started with Unity and Mixamo before continuing this video. Click the link on the screen or in the description to get started with the basics. Let's find some animations. Head over to Mixamo and click on the Animations tab. We are going to need an idle animation. Feel free to use any animation you like, but for this tutorial I will be using this one. We also need a walking animation. I am going to implement running in a later tutorial, so let's stay away from that for now. Once both animations are downloaded, rename them before importing them into our Unity project. I will name mine, anim underscore idle, and anim underscore walk. Drag and drop your new animations into your animations folder within your Unity project. If we select the two new animations, we can edit both of their rigs at the same time. Set the animation type the humanoid, and the avatar definition to copy from other avatar. Select your animator controller from the source drop-down menu, then click apply. We cannot see animation specific details with multiple animations selected, so make sure just the idle animation is selected, then click on the animation tab. Change the animation name to idle. Enable loop time, then check loop pose. Make sure to apply your changes. Do the same for the walk animation. Now open the animator controller by double clicking it. If you're following along from the previous video, delete the waving animation by right clicking it, then select delete. Right click in the empty area, then select create state from new blend tree. Highlight the blend tree and rename it to something like locomotion. Open the blend tree by double clicking it and make sure it is selected. Add two new motion fields. Assign the first to the idle animation and the second to the walk animation. Disable automate thresholds and set the threshold of the walk motion to 0.5. Under the parameters tab, click the plus button to add a new float parameter, naming it move amount. If a blend parameter already exists, right click it, then select delete. After deleting the blend parameter, you'll want to make sure your blend tree is set to use the new move amount parameter. Save your project and enter play mode. By dragging this slider around, we can see our animations begin to blend together. To prevent our player from rotating off to the left or right, we need to make a few adjustments to our animations. With the idle animation selected, navigate back to the animation tab. Under root transformation rotation, check bake into pose and set based upon to original. Under root transformation position, Y, check bake into pose and set based upon to feet. Click apply, then do the exact same thing to the walk animation. Hit the play button again. Your character should be walking a much straighter line now. Cool, let's get into the coding side of things. Create a scripts folder within your assets in the project window and navigate inside it. Create a C-sharp script and name it player controller. Once it's done creating, drag the script onto your player in the hierarchy and double click it from the inspector to launch Visual Studio. Let's start by declaring a private animator named animator. Within the body of the start method, we will initialize the animator using get component. Inside the body of the update method, declare a vector3 variable named movement and initialize it to a new vector3. We will pass input .getAxis, horizontal for the x-axis, 0 for the y-axis, and input .getAxis, vertical for the z-axis. 
Next, declare a float variable named move, underscore, amount, and initialize to math f, dot clamp 01. We will pass the absolute value of movement, dot x, plus, the absolute value of movement, dot z. This will take the user input and always hold a value between 0 and 1. Set the animator controller parameter using the set float method of our animator, passing in the parameter name, move amount, as the first argument, then the move amount variable as the second. Save the script, head back to Unity, and enter play mode. The WAS and D keys now make the player move. We are not setting the rotation for the player yet, so it can only move along its forward axis. Hop back into Visual Studio, and let's fix this. Let's write an if statement that checks whether the move amount variable is greater than zero. If this condition is met, it means that there is movement to be applied and we should rotate our player. Declare a quaternion named, target, underscore, rotation, and initialize it to quaternion, dot, look rotation, and pass our movement variable in as an argument. Now set our player's transform, dot, rotation, to equal quaternion, dot, rotate towards. Pass in the player's rotation as the first argument, our target rotation variable as the second argument, and 500, times, time, dot, delta time, as the third argument. Save the script, head back to Unity, and enter play mode once again. And just like that, we are now fully controlling our player, with animations, through code. Congratulations! You have successfully linked an animator controller, with its parameters, to a C-sharp script. I hope you found this video useful, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you'd like to show support for my channel, please consider giving that thumbs up button a gentle smash. And if you're enthusiastic about continuing this exciting journey through game development with me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Remember, game development is a journey. See you at the next checkpoint.